Coming to you from the heart of Midland, this is the March 2014 edition of MPS Today. My name is Scott Cochran, MPS Social Studies Curriculum Specialist and host of the show. It's been a long, cold, and snowy winter, but we've got some great guests here today, students, teachers, and parent volunteers that'll take your mind off of all that snow for just a little while. We'll hear about the Jefferson Middle School Reading Auction. We'll hear the latest from the Counselor's Corner. And we'll meet with some great parent volunteers from the high schools as they tell us about the Boosters Bash. Remember that we've moved, as you probably know. Uh, we're now on Charter Cable Channel 190. And you can also check out the show on UVerse Channel 99 and our YouTube site. To get to that, just go to the Midland Public Schools website, www.midlandps.org and click on the YouTube button. You can catch all of our shows there. And if you click the red subscribe button on the YouTube page, you'll get updates whenever we post a new show. Uh, our first guests today are from Jefferson Middle School. We have teacher uh, Tanya Lambert and students Stephanie uh, Mathers and John Hopper. So Mrs. Lambert, Stephanie, John, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. You bet. Well, let's start off by having you tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, Mrs. Lambert, uh, tell us about your teaching. You've been in MPS for how long and, and what are you doing? I've been in MPS for 18 years. I've been teaching for 20, and majority of my time has been spent at Jefferson uh, in eighth grade English. Okay. Now, how do you like teaching English? I love it. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I, I have a passion for words and language, and so it's a good fit for me. That's good. And what, what, do you, what do you like, along with that, what do you like most about your job? Uh, well, I love school. I, I've always loved school, yeah. and so I think that going into teaching was a natural progression for me. I loved being in a classroom environment. I loved learning, and I wanted to extend that. And so I think being in a classroom seemed logical for me when I was choosing a career. And what I really like the most is seeing the light bulb go on in, yeah. in my kids' minds when they see the power of language and what good writing can do, and especially when the kids see what they can do with, with writing and, and how successful they can be with it. Sure. And you know, one of those neat things about writing, I'm sure uh, Mrs. Lambert talks with you about this too, right, is, is that it's, it's if you think well, you can write well. In order to write well, you have to think, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's a powerful tool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, Stephanie, John, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves? You're both eighth graders. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what are your favorite subjects at school? I like French. Oh, it's yeah? It's one of my favorite things. I think it's just like how fluent the language feels when you mm -hmm. s speak it and just the flow. I think that's really nice. So what year are you in French right now? Two. So you can tell us a little something in French. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Why don't you say hi, how are you in French? Bonjour, comment ça va? Ah, bien. That's Spanish, but okay, I don't know. <laughs> it's French too. Oh, is it? Oh, good. So yeah, multilingual. I didn't even know. It, so. Well, that's great. So French sounds like a lot of fun. So are you yeah. enjoying your second year? Yeah. Do you have to do a lot of reading in French too, like a whole short story or? No, we do a lot of interactive stuff with, okay. with the teacher. We use the document camera a lot. We do improvs in the middle of class. It's just really, it's kind of like theater, but in French. Okay. That sounds like a fun class. Yeah. All right, now, John, when we talk with you, I want you to talk in Russian, okay? <laughs> so you're, no, I'm just kidding. So, John, what's your favorite uh, class? In Probably school? history. I like oh, yeah? history the most. Um, I just find it interesting. I've always liked history and what happened and how it happened, all that. I also really like the te my teacher, Mrs. Spays, because she doesn't teach out of the book. She teaches, like, yeah. verbally with her worksheets, and I've always hated teachers who just, like, read the book. Okay, we're going to learn about this section of the book. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just not interesting for me. Okay. And Mrs. Bays is a wonderful teacher. So mm -hmm. That's good. And so you're doing an early American history this year. Yep. So where are you guys right now? We're working on the War of, the eight, of 1812. Okay. You know, it's funny because you talked about, you know, reading from the book and having a more experiential class. And I always use the War of 1812 as an example when I'm talking about good teaching. It's not when was the War of 1812, right? It's why, why did it happen? So hopefully when you're done, you'll know about why it happened and mm -hmm. you can tell Mrs. Bays all about it. What do you guys like to do when you're not in school? I like to swim and I've always been a reader and it's gotten to the point where my mom has to take my book away sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> You're not using a flashlight at night, are you, after no. bedtime? No. Okay, good. It's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. You know, if the worst problem you have is that your kids are reading after bedtime, I guess you're doing all right. So what do you like to read? What type of books? I like reading 
uh, fantasy, realistic fiction. I think those are really interesting. I got the stories yeah. they can tell. What's your favorite that you've read in the last year or two? That'd be hard. Yeah. What's a good one? A good one, Twilight. That's always a good one. You like one. the Twilight series too? <laughs> That's uh, always a good one. <laughs> they've been uh, big sellers the last couple of years for sure. Sean, how about you? What do you like to read? I, I personally like to read mainly fantasy adventure books, um, sometimes a little bit of sci-fi, um, kind of all around a bit. But, if yeah. I remember correctly, there was a series of books that came out not too long ago that were written, or at least when he started the books, he was in middle school. Was it the Aragon series? Is that right? Was that a young fellow that wrote those? Do you remember? I, remember. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah? I, I'm not too familiar with, with him as an author. but Have I you read Aragon's? Um, yes, once, but uh, it was a while ago and I right. we forgot everything. Yeah, you might want to go back to it. Might, based on what you said you like, you might be interested in it. So, I love to read, too. I like to read biographies and uh, I like historical fiction. That's my favorite. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes it's good. So what have you read in the last year that you really liked? Well, I'm always reading for my students. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't read much for myself anymore. But, um, oh, the book Revolution. Um, was a good one. Takes, uh, mm -hmm. Well, it kind of takes place in present day, but it takes you back to the French Revolution at the same time. Uh, what else has been good that I have read? Um, Alex Haley's Queen. Um, I read uh, within the last six months or so, and I yeah. loved that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. There's nothing like a great book to keep you, yep. to keep you interested. Well, let's talk about uh, eighth grade English just a little bit before we go on to the reading auction. I, when folks who aren't in schools think about English, obviously, I think they think about reading and writing, but mm -hmm. what are we specifically covering in eighth grade English? Well, the easiest way to, to talk about curriculum for eighth grade English is it is a lot of reading, it's a lot of writing, it's a lot of language study, and it's a lot of thinking. Those are kind of my four areas. Um, but more specifically, when you talk about reading, sure, we have traditional literature, um, including short stories and whole class novels that we read together. But then I'm always encouraging the kids to be in an own choice um, book as well. And when they finish that, they move on to the next one. We do a lot of informational reading practice uh, as well, and we work on strategies for tackling that type of reading. Uh, with writing, um, lots of different types of writing. We focus on informational, narrative, we do an argument piece, and there's always literature analysis type of writing as well. And language study, um, we do vocabulary every week. I push vocab, um, and there's grammar as well. Yeah, so, of course. And critical thinking. you got to put all of that in there, too. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot, okay. <laughs> Well, let's uh, transition then to talking about the reading auction. So you mentioned that you like to have students reading, mm -hmm. uh, you know, books and short stories for class, but also uh, their own choice books as well. Mm -hmm. So that, I imagine that led to the reading auction. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what's that all about? Well, years ago I was struggling finding ways to keep my kids motivated to, to read and wanting to read. And it was kind of like pulling teeth to yeah. get them to, to be interested. And I had always wished that I could pay my students to read. And they thought that yeah. that was a great idea. I would do it if, if I could could get some money for it. And that's where this idea was kind of born. The only way I could obviously pay my students was with virtual money. And so the first group that I did it with, um, I believe are this year's seniors, and I made a deal with them and I said I would pay you one dollar for every page that you read in your own choice books this year. And their eyes kind of got as big as saucers. Yeah. And then we started talking about how it would be virtual money. Um, but they bought into the idea. And um, so they read and read. and before before they can get paid, they do have to turn in a reflective report over what they've read. And once they've satisfied uh, me with that, then I enter the money into their bank account. And we keep a logbook in the classroom, and every child has their own account and uh, that they keep track of throughout the year. And then what we do at the end of the year is they get to spend their earnings that they have uh, saved throughout the school year at, on fun prizes at a silent auction that we hold. It's kind of our end of the year celebration of our reading efforts. That's great. Mm -hmm. So they get paid paid for reading mm -hmm. and virtual money, mm -hmm. and then they can spend that money on a silent auction. Yeah, and so the more you read, the more spending power you sure. have at the auction. Yeah. And, um, and then there are other parts that, that are part of the project sure. as well. Now you said they're reflective projects. Are, are these kind of the old school, traditional, uh, book report that's uh, yeah sort of yeah. they're they're manageable for the kids and they're manageable for me at the same time but they still require them to think mm -hmm. um, there's several that they can choose from they range from uh, reflecting on the, the themes of the stories that they're reading to different aspects about the yeah. characters as well so. so why don't you guys tell us a little bit about that what are some of the 
books that you read or the reports that you've done, what was that like? Well, I've read the last song recently, and I did like a summarizing report. And what I had to do was write a summary of it, of the book, and I had to like write down the themes and what went on, like that mm -hmm. caused it with basically the proof. Mm -hmm. And then what I would recommend, who I would recommend this for. Sure. And it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was easier to do than build a poster or whatever like yeah. I had to do last year. Okay. And John, did you do the same thing or have you done a different one than I that? typically do that same one because it's kind of a straightforward layout. Write a summary of the paragraph, like write the themes, write kind of just this kind of just like three different paragraphs mm -hmm. and that's all. So it, it requires still thought but it's not mm -hmm. like creative thought. It's kind of reaccounting what the book is. Mm -hmm. okay. Even though I like being creative, it's just mm -hmm. I like to get the straightforward thing. Um, have you tried the character analysis? I'm ones? not yet. I've had other any of those? No, I don't think so. The other, the other options are there's one that is um, the the student takes three characters from the novel and they um, pretend that they had gone out for Chinese dinner and at the end of the meal they break open their fortune cookie yeah. and they have to come up with what that character's fortune most likely would have been and justify their reasonings for uh, for that particular fortune and explain it with proof from the story. And there's another similar one um, that involves horoscopes and so they take several characters that they read about and they match them with horoscopes that seem fitting for their character sure. for one reason or another. So you're trying to, you know, that finding evidence from what you read mm -hmm. and uh, proving a case from, from, your, mm -hmm. from your reading is such an important part of what mm -hmm. we do. And if you take a look at the Common Core State Standards, which I know there's all kinds of, I don't know, there's all kinds of things that people say about the Common Core, but really it's, it's just about using informational reading and writing in mm -hmm. English to develop great thinkers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and, and I'm that, asking them to think that's of That's what you're trying to have yeah. them do, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Uh, well, uh, as you've gone through your reading, I know there's more to the auction than that. So I heard something about prizes, that you get to yeah. bid on prizes. Tell us about how those prizes show up in your classroom. So how do people know to send things to your classroom, and how do they know what to send? How does that work? Well, we wrote letters to certain businesses, and we started that about mid-year, and we just sent them out. And we have them addressed to the person or to the business and then they return with our ad with our address on them with optional gifts if they decide to or not mm -hmm. and we just start accumulating all of these gifts mm -hmm. and sure. that we can bid on. Yeah. We wrote our letters in November and every child signed up to write to a different place and we brainstormed what would be good businesses to contact. And in the letters, they explain what our project is about and what we're doing and um, ask if they would be interested in helping us by donating a prize. So we wrote our letters in November, and it takes us a long time to fine tune them because we want them to be as perfect as possible. I think sure. we went through, yeah. what, three drafts? Yeah. Three or drafts four. this year, sometimes four. Yeah, sometimes some people had to do them over again mm -hmm. or rewrite them because maybe something And was some people wrote to multiple. Yep, and some, yeah, some children wrote yep, to more I, than one place. I did two different ones, I believe. Okay. Who did you write to, John? I think I did um, Logan Steakhouse, and then I think it was Dow Gardens. Okay. And so we mailed, we finally mailed our letters just before the holidays, and then um, over the last month and a half or so, the mail's been trickling in. Yeah. And, and we usually get a, a maybe about a third of a, of a, a comeback with that's the letters. That's pretty good response, right? Yeah. So and our families help as well. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. The, our, uh, we have such supportive families in Midland that that's, uh, I'm sure mm -hmm. that's part of it as well. So it sounds like that's part of your curriculum as well, though, mm -hmm. writing a business right. letter. Yeah, uh, it was a, it's a good lesson on letter format, and um, it's a good lesson on voice, because we talked about how you can't sound like a sappy teenager yeah. and pleading, and it has, to be vo it has to be voiced just right to be taken seriously. And it's also a good lesson on revising and making sure that your writing is technically correct, because we want it to be taken seriously with those letters. Yeah, and, no and and it, they work. And, and it's I, hard work. And yeah. I tell my kids that yeah. writing is hard work, but it's worth it in the end. 
So one of my favorite stories about the letters, it didn't happen this year, but a couple years ago, I had a, a student who wrote his letter to Crystal Mountain Ski Resort, hoping to get some ski lift passes for the auction. And I heard back from the gal who received the letter, and at first it was a negative response, and she was saying that um, they weren't able to help this year, and they, they kind of tried to stick to their area with their donations. And about three days later, she contacted me again, and she said, I keep thinking about that letter and how well-worded it was and how a nice of a job this young man did. And she said, I'm going to find a way to make this happen. Yeah. And she did. And we received well, passes great. from them. So and it was a good example for the students of look what your writing can do when it's done right. Mm -hmm. The power of, of writing and persuasive and argumentative writing is mm -hmm. part of our curriculum as well there mm -hmm. too. So. Yeah. What is auction day like? I imagine it must be exciting. Right. Well, and these two haven't been to auction yeah. day yet, so they can't tell you a whole lot, I, um, and they don't know so much yet. I witnessed, well, yeah, last year I was in French 1 with some 8th graders. It was on the opposite side of the building from a classroom, and they were up out of their seats waiting for the teacher to, to dismiss them to mm -hmm. be able to rush over to the auction. So on yeah. auction day, it's usually about the third week of May, um, a little bit before Memorial Day, and we always have it on a Friday. And I set up the auction, and some parents helped me too because I can't do it by myself, but the auction is set up in the science lab that's connected to my room. And it's, uh, it's a large room because um, on a typical year we have about 120 prize items, wow. and it's decorated like a gala event. And um, every child is, is given a, a bid number um, to, to use throughout the day, and I have to teach them how an auction works prior yeah. to this because the, I think a lot of my kids think that there will be a price tag on that digital camera and if I have enough money that's what I'm gonna buy and um, once I walk them through a mock um, auction they figure out how it works and then the fun begins but they come in that morning and begin placing their bids and they drift in throughout the day in between classes and when they're with me for English they get extended time in the auction space and they get to go during lunch and um, yeah. and then it ends um, at the very end of the day and it's it's crazy. It's fun. They they have a blast because they get into bidding wars with one another. They they bid themselves out of the money they have to spend, and so then they decide, oh, I'm going to have to go put my money on something else because this is now too expensive for me. Um, they they really do have a blast. Sure. And um, usually when the bell rings to close bidding at the end of the day, there's a round of applause, and uh, and then the following Monday they find out if they were the highest bid on an item. Okay. And let's, if there's somebody watching who wants to participate, who wants to support reading mm -hmm. uh, and support our students in your program, well, can they email you uh, about inquiring mm -hmm. about uh, donating something that could be auctioned yep, off? Yep, they can email me or they can contact Jefferson Middle School. The okay. office will know um, who we are and what we're about. But we're in the process right now of gathering our prize donations. And we, I typically try to have everything in line by the end of March so that mm -hmm. the kids can write the program for the auction as well. But um, if anybody in the community has an idea of a prize that a young teen would be interested in, yeah. by all means, we will take take uh, anything that people are willing to donate and I've had people offer um, cash donations just to you know to put towards a purchase for something that the mm -hmm. kids would like to see as well so we're always willing to take so those. That could be good to put to good use as well. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. oh, that would be Lambert and then what's your email? Lambert TS okay. at MPS dot K12 dot MI dot US. All right and we'll put that mm -hmm. up on the screen for folks and the phone number is 923 5873. 923-5873, so we'll mm -hmm. put that up too. So if anybody wants to contribute and, and help out, it's a, it's a great idea. We'd appreciate it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know what? I mean, we, read so, we read so many negative stories and, and bad things are out there. The idea of supporting people reading and uh, preparing for the future is just a, it's a lot of fun. So, Well, it sounds like a, a great event and, and a lot of excitement. It makes me wish that I was back in the eighth grade. <laughs> uh, there's not much that would want to take me back to the eighth grade, but maybe that would be one thing. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, good luck in the auction. Thanks. And good luck thank the rest you. of the school year. And, and thank you very much for coming here to talk with us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bet. you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, up next on MPS Today, we'll have our Counselor's Corner for the month of March. And then later, remember, we have the Boosters coming in to talk about the Boosters Bash. So stick around for more MPS Today right after this. Some
Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. All right. I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome to Counselor's Corner. I'm Craig Hawkins, Counselor at Midland High, and this is Jill English, Counselor at Dow High. Today we're going to cover some of the important topics for the month of March. One of the first things that we do in March is to test all of our 11th graders. Uh, they have to do a state-mandated test. It's a three-day test that involves the ACT for the first day, work keys for the second, and the state of Michigan testing for the third. Um, all juniors will do that, and it's a really good test for kids to figure out where they're at academically. And that ACT test is a test that's required for any four-year college or university for admittance. So the kids get a good opportunity there. They should get their results back in about three weeks. That's the hope. So that then they could register for another ACT test that's given independently uh, by ACT on Saturdays that students would have to pay for. Luckily, they don't have to pay for the March test that we give them. So that's kind of the first thing that kids have to be ready for uh, for that first week in March. Another important topic in March is the AP registration. That's advanced placement testing. Students that take advanced placement courses are able to register for a test in that course so that they could potentially earn college credit. We always recommend students to make sure and contact a college to be sure those credits are going to transfer appropriately based upon their test scores. And that registration is done in the main offices of the uh, two high schools. Usually the test is about $89 for each exam. And if they have any questions, be sure and contact your high school counselor so we can go through it. Also, AP teachers are very informed about those particular tests. And again, that will be done all through the month of March so that that registration can be completed. And then students will be actually doing those tests in May. In gearing up for next year, um, we wrapped up scheduling with all 9th through 11th grade students in the end of February. So during the month of March, you will be able to view your students' course selections on Home Access Center. And it will probably be available on Home Access, Home Access Center for a couple of weeks. View them with your student, and if you have any questions or concerns about the courses that they have signed up for for next year, please contact the counseling office and we can um, look over those selections with you and if you have any questions we can talk with you about them or the teacher to make sure that they are in the right course for next year. Um, something else just to remind you of is that on March 11th will be high school conferences at both Dow High and Midland High. So if you would like to at attend conferences, talk with your child's teacher about any concerns that you may have, March 11th is the date to reserve for that. And then near the end of the month, on uh, the week of March 24th, both high schools will be giving the plan test to all 10th graders. And the plan test has two components to it. One part is an actual practice ACT test to help them get an idea of how the test runs, the pacing of um, how they can pace themselves so that they can have enough time to take the test. And then they will also do a career interest survey so that they can get an idea of the types of careers that they might be interested in for the future. So that wraps up the month of March. Thank you for joining us this month on Counselor's Corner. 
and we'll see you next time. That's low, that's low, that's low. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptextstoprex.org. Welcome back to MPS Today. We're here with two of the hardest working parent volunteers in the district, uh, Rich Jude of the Dow High School Athletic Boosters and Rob Rouse representing the Midland High Athletic Boosters. So, Rich and Rob, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. You bet. Our pleasure. Now, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, what are your connections to the high schools and to the, the booster programs? Well, well, myself, I'm president of the uh, Mid Midland Booster Club, um, and my connection really is both my daughters have played sports there, primarily the running sports, and just saw it as a good opportunity to get involved and, and saw the benefit that the sports yeah. bring, not just my kids, but all, but all the kids in the area. Good. And how about you, Rich? My, my relationship with the high schools here in Midland started 29 years ago uh, when I started as a uh, as a sophomore at Dow High School, and so I'm an 87 graduate, yeah. and uh, it's been part of my life for most of it. And uh, my children, I have two daughters that are at, at Dow right now, both of them are volleyball players, and I have a son who will be coming up through the program here real soon as well. So it's, uh, it's a big part of, a, of our family and something that we're committed to. Yeah, great. It is, it is to me it's always amazing uh, as, a, as an educational, uh, professional and as a parent and a community member. I really see the benefit of students being involved in sports and other extracurriculars as well, mm -hmm. but certainly uh, life lessons and time management and being part of a team, it's really important. Yeah, you, you bring that up. I, I see that w w with my kids and you mentioned all extracurricular activities. Yeah, sure. And I think our schools are really blessed to have great programs in, in everything. Um, both of my kids uh, started out running cross country at Midland High and whenever I talk to a, a new parent, especially when they have a, a child, their oldest child entering high school as a freshman, they're yeah. a little intimidated, I say get in a program, get in some activity right away. Um, I, think, I think it does a kid uh, very well just to be involved be part of a group, but it's also when they go to school that first day and some upperclassmen know who they are, right. recognize them, show them the ropes, I mean that's just a huge benefit right there. It's nice, no doubt. My, my daughters will probably hate me for, for even saying this, but I did actually a personal study on, on our family as to uh, what type of grades my girls get uh, in season, out season, they get better grades during the season, so yeah. I think athletics actually helps you uh, work your time schedule. Uh, you know you have to be on the field during this period of time, so you only have X number of time to study, and they make sure that that gets done. So yeah, it's, it's harder to procrastinate when you know this is all the right. time that you have, isn't it? Right, mm -hmm. exactly. I discovered the same thing about myself when I was in high school, and uh, the the busier I was with sports and other activities, the better I did in my classes. But it doesn't surprise me to hear you say that, because uh, that we've done studies, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, large-scale studies, and what we found is that uh, as students are involved in that one team sport or one uh, extracurricular activity throughout the school year, they're, they're more likely to have higher grades and do well on the ACT than if not. Uh, it just Students that are active and involved in things tend to do better, mm -hmm. and there's a direct correlation of the numbers, uh, the numbers prove it. So. Uh, we're glad to see that. Well, what do you do uh, when you're not on the sidelines or helping out with the boosters? Well, well certainly uh, being on the sidelines it takes, a, takes a significant amount of time sure. and being involved in the boosters. I mean, uh, the sports my, my kids were involved in, I mean, when you're running a track meet or a cross country meet, it does take uh, parents to run it. You have to have them there to yeah. actually run the meet. So consequently, you know, my, my activities are outdoor type activities as well, um, in addition to my career, of course. But, you know, I like running just like, just like my kids do, uh, playing golf, any, anything outside. If it's working in the yard, you know, I just like being outside. Mm -hmm. How about you, Rich? Well, I uh, currently I am a plan giving director over at uh, Central Michigan University work in their development department over there and uh, when I'm not doing that I'm coaching baseball at multiple levels right here yeah. in, in Midland and uh, enjoy just being part of of the community. Yeah that's great. Well it's kind of exciting for Midland right now we've got a Midland High School graduate uh, managing in the major leagues that's kind yeah. of neat isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Terry Collins yeah. that's a, an exciting thing. Well uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the athletic booster clubs and, and what you all do. So what role do you play in the sports programs? 
Well, uh, again, we are two, two separate booster clubs, mm -hmm. but we have come together for the event we're here to talk about. But our club, you know, we serve to fund and help fund some of the sports within our high school and support the student athletes. Um, and, and we kind of look at it in a few different ways. One thing, we, we, we try to make sure that our funds that we cover as many different athletes as we can. So consequently, you know, we buy all the uniforms now for all sports. Uh, Eric Albright, our AD, has mm -hmm. us on a rotation and, and, and we fund the uniforms. We fund all of the uh, registration fees for all our teams if they're in any kind of tournament or event, things like that. Um, and additionally though, then we also try to do some bigger ticket items. Uh, such as in the past, we, we bought wrestling mats, cheer mats, uh, blocking sleds for, for the football team, and most recently this year, our big ticket item is the uh, was the uh, irrigation on the softball mm -hmm. field, um, which is was well needed. Um, then the other thing that, that we try to do is is you know with with the rising costs. Uh, that the parents are facing, you know, pay to play, things like that, at least take some of that burden off of them as yeah. we can. And, and to do that, we basically allocate funds, we call it spirit money at our club, to, to the individual teams and allow them to spend it as they wish. And, and you know, anytime, I wouldn't want to call them hidden costs, but whenever you're, you're in a sport, you know, there's always more than the pay to play costs and things like that. And, and so we, we give that to the teams to kind of decide how to, That's at their great. discretion. And how about with Dow High School? Well, uh, we're similar. To, to middle and high. We wear green and gold, they wear blue and gold, yeah. but we're, we're, our mission is exactly the same um, as, as middle and high uh, group. Uh, some of the purchases that we've been able to make with the, with the funds that we raise here recently have been uh, dugouts, uh, new dugouts on the, on the baseball field, as well as also a wrestling mat. Mm -hmm. um, uh, wrestling now has become, you know, where do you store the wrestling mat? So it, it became even more involved in just the mat itself, but uh, the hoisting mechanism yeah. that, that takes it up. And, and really what we've seen over the past few years is the reduction of budgets, not just in athletics, but in, mm -hmm. in all extracurricular activities. And so both booster uh, clubs are here to, to help supplement that budget through the parent volunteers that are involved in the clubs. Yeah, and we were talking earlier about how important athletics and other extracurriculars are to our students. They're also important to the community as well. They're are rallying points for the community mm -hmm. and good for community morale. But there's no question that the schools don't have uh, a lot of money to go around anymore, do we? So uh, it's such an important thing. I, I think it's important that folks know, and I remember this in my past as an athletic director in a different district, but same exact story. You know, ticket prices, pay to play, uh, those don't cover the cost of, of an athletic program. Uh, they don't cover the cost of the officials and the coaches and, and, uh, and, and everything else, much less the facilities so exactly no you hit it right on the head there Scott yeah yeah and I think a lot of it with people look into it the, the, there's a lot of costs associated with sports that people really don't oh, see absolutely. I mean you know like I said I keep referring to running cross-country people think well there's no cost there but but yet I mean you have coaches you have uniforms and every time you have a meet you have either a registration fee or paying a referee and certainly other sports have yeah. similar type costs that maybe people don't think about all the right. time it's ongoing know? yes well, I, I'll use this as an example you know we all on Friday nights we head out to Midland Community Stadium to watch a, a football game and at halftime the band goes out there and the Palm Squad's out there and they're doing their thing and what we take for granted is you know the palms that the Palm Squad is using those things deteriorate over a year that becomes an annual item for us for right. purchase mm -hmm. that needs to be made so that the the girls look good out there on the on the field while they're doing their routines. Sure, mm -hmm. you know what's and, and that's so true and, and you brought up one of my favorite events of the year, or you referred to it anyways, which is that the Midland Dow uh, football game, which of course is a big deal and lots of people there. But my favorite part about it actually is looking out at the field and how many students from the two schools are involved. Mm -hmm. You know, of course you have right. all the, uh, the guys from the football teams and the coaches involved there, but then all the kids from the bands, uh, the palm squads, uh, the spirit teams. I mean, you have uh, over 500 students that are involved in, in one event for both schools. And what a great thing that is. Yeah. And that's not even counting people who are in the stands and right. uh, doing something positive and not well, running around doing yeah. something else and all that good stuff, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Well, uh, let's talk about the Boosters Batch. That's what we came to talk about. It's a, it's a great event, but tell us about it. What is it exactly? Well, it, it really is. It's, it's the two booster clubs coming together at, at one event. Um, 
and 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 the primary idea was that you know all the different teams and the different clubs are out soliciting funds maybe from our community and 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 really besides a fun night out i think it provides you know one avenue for the businesses within Midland and uh, the community members to give back to, to, to the athletics at both schools at the same mm -hmm. time. So what's the night? Rich, can you take us through the night? What's it like? Sure, absolutely. You know, we, we bring the community together at Dow Diamond, which is a great rallying yeah. point within our community. And, and you know, we put together really a show and live music. We have dancing, food, raffles. Um, silent auction mm -hmm. items, a, a wide array of silent auction items, some great golf packages, trips, uh, and other items that are up for auction. Um, so everyone's having a good time. And it, it gives us the opportunity to bring our people together mm -hmm. for a great cause. I mean, we have these student athletes that are out there trying to have a great experience. Yeah. How do we give them that great experience and how can we have the community rally to make sure that that experience takes place the mm -hmm. way it needs to take place? And that's what the Booster Bash, really our mission is all about. Yes, we wanna raise money, but we also wanna use those funds to enhance the experience for our student athletes. Right. Yeah, so it's uh, so that's at the Loon Stadium. And when is the Booster's Bash this year? It'd be March 21st. Okay. And we always that's have it like Friday. the Friday before the last week before spring break. We okay. figure most of our sports teams are, are in a low spot, yeah. and, and so it's a good night so everybody can attend. Sort of in between the yeah. winter and spring seasons, exactly. if you will. Exactly. <laughs> so parents aren't quite running around to quite as many practices and games as they are at other times. Yeah. So March 21st at the stadium, and uh, as far as purchasing tickets or finding out more information, where's a good place for folks to go? Well, well, there's a couple places. First, you know, any any of the Booster Bash uh, team members uh, have tickets for sale, but probably the best is go to our website, okay. mpssportsboosters.com, and you can do everything there. As Rich said earlier, one-stop shopping. You can buy tickets to the event. You can uh, make a donation if you wish, mm -hmm. become a sponsor. Uh, so, so as I was going to ask you that too, so if somebody wants to donate something for the silent auction or donate money to one of the boosters uh, groups, that's a good place to go. mpssportsboosters.com would be the place to go. That is the place, okay. absolutely. And what if somebody wants to get active or involved? Uh, can they find out information on how to get a hold of one of you there as well? Or mpssportsboosters.com. Like right. we said, it's a one-stop one right shop. Right. shop. <laughs> You know, you go on there and um, you're able to express any of the wishes that you'd like to, like to okay. if you want to be part of it. What are what are a couple of the uh, new things for this this year's Booster Bash? What are, what's the music? Do we know? Is it a DJ or a live band? <laughs> oh. We have to wait and find out. Oh, well, yeah, buy a ticket and find out. Right, yeah. But no, actually, it's going to be the Sinclairs. We've had them okay. uh, every year. They're they're a good band, and 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 you know, we always try to plan some other little different activities. Uh, so it's a little bit different each year. Um, I think last Never. night. Yeah, we have a, a couple new items for auction this this year. We're actually we're auctioning off a whole pig. A pig. A pig. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can. Are you allowed to keep a pig in the city of Midland in your backyard, or is this? A, <laughs> uh, no. This is a post. No. This is the afterwards. This is no. After meat. after you purchase the pig, then the pig goes to butcher. Ah, so. I got it. So yeah. you just need a freezer to yeah. keep the meat in. All right. Well, good. Exactly. That's uh, that's great. Some ribs for the summer. If exactly. You're getting ready for that. That's right. always good. Uh, what else do we need to know about the boosters bash? Is, have we covered it at all? Yeah, I would think so. Again, again, it's right. just again everybody's opportunity, the community's opportunity to, uh, you know, support Midland School athletics uh, yeah. for both schools, and 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 you know it, it's been successful the last few years, I would say, and okay. so we just invite everybody to to uh, go to MidlandSportsBoosters.com and yeah. get some tickets and 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 join us on March 31st or 21st rather. March 21st. March 21st. Right. March 21st. Friday. Well, so I have to ask last question. So you, you seem, you're sitting awfully close together, and you seem like you get along all right, even though we got Dow High School, Midland yeah. High School. You hear so much about the rivalry, and it's a great rivalry, but uh, how do you do as far as working together with each other? Oh, well, Scott, I, I think it's important for this entire community to realize that, you know, we are one community. Mm -hmm. you know, yes, we, we have two different high schools, and our students go at it uh, during the school year. Um, coming from Midland, being raised in Midland, yeah. going through that rivalry, uh, when it's all said and done, you, you're from Midland. And we take that concept when we pulled this thing together. Um, we work very, very well together. Mm -hmm. Our committee is half Midland High, half Dow High. 
basically sit in a room on a weekly basis and work together to, so that we can yeah. put together the booster batch in the best possible way. And everyone gets along. We actually have a great time together. Yeah. And uh, we'll be lifelong friends because of right, it. Right, right. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can we can use that, we can be an example to what uh, what can go on between the two schools out there and yeah. you know our student athletes also are able to come together and do some great things together as well. Yeah, I, th I think Rich is right. I mean, we are a community, we just happen to have two high schools. Now, right. now Rich and I didn't know each other, I don't think, really before this yeah. event, but you know, if I, I think in my head going around the table, there's people there, you know, that I work with, go to church with, people that, uh, you know, our kids have been on the same teams, maybe in some youth sports programs over, right. over the years. And so there's certainly people that you know, and, and, and sometimes some of the other people I didn't know, I didn't even know really which school they were associated sure. with. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really, the two schools do uh, pull for each other when, when they're not directly competing. Yeah. You, know, you know, in my case, you know, I've seen Dow High coaches and parents cheering for my kids while they're out there performing. Uh, likewise, we, we cheer for their athletes too sure. when we're out there. And so, so yeah, I mean, we are a community. We just happen to have two high schools. Yeah, yeah. it's two schools, one town, one community. Right. Right. They're, all our, they're all our kids. Right. Scott, uh, I mean, the Booster Batch was put together to hit the challenges head on. And Dow High's challenges are no different than Midland High's challenges. Yeah. So what better way to meet those challenges than let's do it together. Yeah. All right, well, that's great. So it sounds like a, a wonderful event, and we really appreciate the spirit of you all working together and, and the work that you do independently as well to support the, our students and our, our programs. It's really, uh, really appreciated. So thank, oh, thank you very you. much. And thanks for having us out, Scott. Of Absolutely. course, our pleasure. Yeah, so March you. 21st at the stadium, and uh, we'll get that information on the screen one more time here. All right. So. All well, right. we, we expect to see a lot of people there. It should be a fun night. All right, well, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And remember, you can watch our show on Charter Cable Channel 190, on UVerse Channel 99, and on our YouTube site, just go to the Midland Public School site at www.midlandps.org and click on the YouTube button in the top corner, and you can catch all of our programming there. So enjoy the show, and we'll see you next time on MPS Today.